so we'll look at hash indexing today and uh, two categories of uh, indexing is available using hash functions one is static hashing and one is dynamic hashing so let's look at static hashing Does do they do they give the projects to you or and is it before the lecture when is the deadline for them? I actually <laughs> thought they were going to hand them in to you in lecture. Okay. <laughs> there are, fine. There are some, some in the box. Already, Great. So. Okay, that's fine. So right after the lecture, we can go and if anybody hasn't put in the box, give it to me, or we can make copies and then distribute, make the grid and distribute to other people to evaluate the projects. Okay. Okay. So we are talking about static hashing. So hashing would be a hash function that goes on a so you have a key value and you feed into a hash function and then this maps to multiple groupings you can think of which they call as buckets. So you have set of buckets which follow the rule defined by the hash function and that is how the classification occurs. So when you want to do a search on a key, you put in the value, apply the hash function and then you know which bucket it will fall in. So searching is really quick in hash functions and they are very highly optimized for uh, search functions. The problem is that if you so there is, this is our, so it can contain say four data fields and all these four are filled up. Then we have a similar situation as uh, ISAM, remember index sequential uh, access method because this is static. When you define this, you define the number of buckets you define your hash function, so you will have to start adding now overflow pages. And that is where performance degrades. Because you'll have to then start searching into more pages as once you identify the bucket, then you have to go in and uh, keep on reading more pages into the disk. The the way to handle is, one is the way, uh, remember, to keep it 80% occupied to start with, so you have enough space, so you can add more. But once it is into the overflow pages, either you do a rehashing, in that you read everything, redefine the number of buckets, and you start from scratch. That is, again, a very expensive operation, and while you're doing it, the data is unavailable because there's no indexing file. So this is, these are the things that happen with the, with the static hashing. So how do you overcome the problems of static hashing? The second is dynamic hashing. I'm going to draw the diagram from the book. It is in dynamic hashing, you have So you have extensible hashing and linear hashing. So in extensible hashing, what you do is, now I'll expand extensible hashing, then we'll get to linear hashing. In extensible hashing, you maintain a directory.
and this is a directory of pointers that will point to buckets. So let me actually write the whole example. Now how many feet? Four to start with. I think that's what they do. Four. Okay. And uh, do this. So this is zero zero. I'll just explain the hash function also that they're using. One zero. One one. And this has 4, 12, 32, 16, 1, 5, 21, 13, 10, 15, 7, 19. So what, what is being done is, let me write this also, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 1, 2, 4, 32. So this is n, and this is 2 to the power n. Okay. So if we have 4, now 4 gets the representation 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. 1, 0, 0. And the last two digits are 0, 0. So this, it maps here. Okay, same would happen if it was 12. 12 would be 1, 1, 0, 0. So last two digits are 0, 0, so it maps here. Okay, same for the rest. Say if we take 15, 15 would be 12, 1, 1, 1, 1. These four, and so 15 is going to map here. Now what we are doing is we are adding as uh, we are referencing as with this hash, hash function and taking the last two digits and mapping them. Now if we add another number here, okay, that is where we have to take care of things dynamically. I keep this here. Because in static, we would extend, start extending this with a pointer because we, we don't have a choice. But now we will dynamically rearrange this. And what number do they add? Do you know what number they add? I just want to take, which one? 20? 20. Okay. So let us represent 20. 20 would be 16 and 4. So it would be 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so that means 20 should go here, but it can't contain more than 4. So we are going to split this, and we are going to split this one into, so I'm going to just rewrite this part again. Okay, this only that row. And when this splits, we are going to have 4, and I'll tell you why, 4, 12, 20, and the other one will have 32 and 16. What suddenly happened is, now you need to distinguish between these two. Okay? So the way to do it is, that you will double the directory. You did not, you only added one extra row for this, to accommodate this fifth one, but you will double this directory. Now doubling this directory, means right now there are four uh, members in this array of directory. We are going to make it eight by adding is that eight? Okay. What we will do is we will say Zero, 1, 
zero one zero zero one one and then will be one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 okay so now our directory will become this and we will start looking at three uh, representations of same numbers up to three digits you have to recast the whole table no, you'll recast the, okay, recasting is, I mean to say, you'll have to now repoint the pointers, if that is what you meant, you're right. Okay? So I'm going to erase this part and map this, this new one to it. What's in the block before 16 on your first new? Oh, 32. 32? Yeah. So let's see what will point where. This one goes away. So now we have five. And uh, one would be, if we say one, that would be zero, zero, one, zero. Okay. So one will point to this bucket. Is it? Which one did I do? Yeah, it's the one one above it. It's 001. Oh, sorry. So I did wrong here. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can you know that all the rest of the... No, all of them are going to... So let's go to 5. Okay? Okay, let's go to 5. 5 will be... Uh, this, this, right? One, one, zero? One, Is that correct? One, zero, one. Oh, God. One, zero, one. Sorry. So, five is going to be... Wait. So, what they've done is they haven't actually split any of the buckets other than bucket A. So yeah, bucket A, 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 A two, but B, C, and D are just are pointed to by both. They are going to be both. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, where is that? One, oh, one. So this goes here. So until it gets full, you don't bother splitting it. Exactly. So what you end up doing is you save, that is the gist of the whole thing. You split only when it is needed, but directory you can change because it has very less overhead. Okay, this could have up to 100 pointer, uh, data pointers here. Okay, so you don't end up duplicating this. Remember in our static hashing, we would end up adding another one as big as that. Okay, and reducing the performance. Here, as it is needed, you'll keep on duplicating. So I'll just, do you want me to complete the whole table? Like, or, I think this is, or I'll just map it with this. Yeah. Okay, these two. So let's go to 16. 16 should be this, so... Right? So all zeros. And same should be 32 then? Yeah. Okay. Next is 4. 4 would be 100. Zero, zero. So 100 zero, zero will get here. Okay? And where did the 32 come from again? Oh, it was already there. It was in our first 4. It was? Yeah. Uh, wasn't it there? I thought it was. Yeah, it I was copied that. Okay. So if you have like a million records, you have to do a lot of work. But it it really improves the performance because if you could have a million rows like this, you just looking at by this directory structure, you know where at least to. So one millionth of a record you have to search. Okay. So this is extensible hashing where you do directory doubling. Okay. Now let's look at... Put the oil. Has anybody installed like uh, Unix OS and Oracle on it or any database on Unix? Uh, Unix Solaris? Solaris. I mean Solaris. Um, Not we, Unix. We, we all did. 
Well, on, oh, you're on. on? Linux, oh, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. On, not on Solaris. Yeah. No, I just I what I was uh, I was saying it is a little different, and when I did it, I learned a lot because Linux is very straightforward. And uh, that was straightforward. Oh, okay. <laughs> it took us days. <laughs> really? The ins installation or install. Yeah, the, the installation instructions were not terribly clear. And you use the one on AD site, right? Yeah, we also have slower. I mean, we have slow, small machines, which is probably the bigger problem. But, uh, yeah. No, because you must be having the same Celeron 500 with 128 meg RAM at least. Mm -hmm. That should do it. And that takes like two hours. Day. Two hours. Yeah, oh, it, longer. It took four, uh, four to five hours to create the initial database. The initial databases and indexes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange. Maybe we have poorly tuned machines or something. <laughs> there isn't better than the deal. That's if you were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> if it worked the first time. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Was pretty <laughs> <laughs> one file. <laughs> okay. So linear hashing is the other technique. And linear hashing, uh, Alex, I'm going to use the yellow chalk. Oh, okay. In linear hashing, let us think of these as the uh, records. In linear hashing, you maintain a pointers. The idea here is you'll have a group of Then another variable is called a level, or, or you can say, what is it called? Uh, round zero to n, or whatever uh, round number is, and then you have the buckets, and you have a variable called next round the function. Round is is the round that you are taking, no variable. Oh, you can okay. think of it as the round. That if you are taking the first round around it, second round, third round, that way. So to begin with, you have round zero. And next is also zero. The variable next has value zero. I'll fill up the table the way it is in the example so I can tell you how things are working. I will just write this up. Here, H zero, and in this there are zero 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 one. So they take four one two three four. So we can extend this later on, but let's take four zero 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 one. One zero one one. Okay, so you have the round zero or level zero, and what is the data that is in here? Thirty two. Their hashing function is that they take the mod, so you have right now four, uh, I just want to make sure that is their hashing function, just let's make sure 44 mod 4 would be equal to uh, 0, right? Okay, 
So this is their, whatever is the remainder is they are mapping here. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So nine mod, yeah, okay. So they take this value, find the modulo, and then whatever is the remainder is being mapped here in these. Okay, so if we took 9 mod 4 would be equal to 1 because 4 times 2 is 8 and this will be mapped as 0, 1. It's possible they're just using the same hashing that they were using before the last two digits in the binary number which corresponds to mod 4. No, uh, it is not the same because if you think, uh, if you have... 9, 9 would be, let me think, it is. it matches, but is that the same? Can you make sure of that? I don't think it was the same hashing function, because in extensible hashing, you take actually the number and convert that. So 5 is 101. Yeah, no, it is not the same. Because if you take, if you take in, in extensible hashing, 5 will map to 101, okay? But in this, 5 will map to what? Only one. Let me just make sure. Just one second. It seems like the, just the, want the to page 0, so the, the level, uh, the, the first level that they do it on, they're only looking at the last two digits. And then the next level of splitting, H1, yeah. they're looking at the last three digits. Exactly. So then 5 gets mapped to see where? It doesn't get mapped to 00. It doesn't get mapped to 101. It gets mapped to 001. Right? Right. So they are different functions. Okay. Okay. So let me just clarify the point he raised. In the previous one, what we were doing were whatever the number we were looking at, the same, the representation was being used to map. Here, the hashing function actually takes the modulus of that, and modulo is the number of uh, buckets here. Okay, this number n here. If there were eight buckets, it would be different. Slightly different hashing function. I think that five made it clear. I was also, I wanted to make sure. Okay, so let us let us continue with this, with four. Now, if we want to add something here, let me see what they add here. Do they add 43? Okay, so what is the first one they add? 43, is it? Yeah. Okay. So 43 goes into 0, 1, 1, or this 1, 1 bucket. Because 43 mod 4 is equal to 3, yeah. and 3 will come here, 1, 1. Okay? Now suddenly what is happening is we have an overflow. This will trigger... Now, next was at 0. This overflow will trigger the split of this row. It won't trigger the split of this row. Remember this. There is this difference. What it will trigger is, it will trigger the split of this row, and what you will end up getting is, so once you will trigger, that means you are going to double this directory. So, it will become, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it will become z. What's the general, does any overflow signal splitting of the top row? Exactly, yeah. That is what is the whole concept behind this is, whenever you will have an overflow, it will trigger the split of the, row that is pointing at next. Exactly. So after we will split this one, we will have a corresponding row for this, which will have a part of this data, but then next will point to here. 
you increment next when each time you add some data? Each time you split something. Each time you split something. If we were adding a number here, say whatever, uh, some some number x here, it won't trigger a split. You can, okay, I'll I'll give you a little more information. In in linear hashing, you can give a conditional split also. You can say split when occupancy goes above 80 percent. In that case, this will also trigger the split. But the reference that example that book is using is whenever so that it is easier to compare the two is whenever there is an overflow trigger the split. Okay, so this uh, this triggered the split. It is going to take some part of the data here, depending on how these three get represented, up to three di three digits now. You know, this is going to be re-evaluated with the three digits, and then the next will start pointing here. Okay. Okay. Next pointer is to start with next is at zero. And it is pointing at the first bucket here. We added a new number 43 here, key value. Now there is an overflow in this row. So this will trigger the split of this row. And next pointer will move to here. So this row is already split. And the corresponding split is here at n. This is 0. This is n minus 1. Right? If there are four rows, 0 bucket, first bucket, second bucket, third bucket, fourth bucket is here. So 0 will have, will correspond to n. This would be the pair of the split. Then this, once this one will split, it is going to have its pair here. I don't understand why the zero bucket splits when there's still an empty cell. Yeah, that is that is the fundamental uh, premise of linear hashing. That you make it consistently, you keep on increasing. So the advantage remains that it is very uniformly distributed, the data, but you still have at the most one or two levels of overflows because this is going to get split also after four. So you're not leaving it also, like in static hashing. So you are doing both the things. One is you, with the previous example in extensible hashing, whenever you have to split, you have to do directory doubling. Right? In this, even if you split this, you won't have to do directory doubling. Because we have already done a directory doubling once, and till all of them get split, you don't need to do it. Wait, so at this point, we just we just filled up the bottom row mm -hmm. or some rows, so mm -hmm. we split the top. Mm -hmm. Did we or did we not double the index? First time, yes, we did. Okay. Now, if we have to split this one, mm -hmm. this first doubling itself will take care of it, right? right because, because we can add exactly, add exactly, flow. yeah. There also is no index here. Yeah, there is no directory. Thing yeah. on the, it doesn't exist. The thing on the left there. Okay. So it's the, this, the, the, the order in which they're split all keeps them in the right order. We're not, down, we're not jumping around randomly. Okay. That is a very important point. I should have pointed out very clearly. Okay. This is a mapping that I'm showing it to you, that this is how it is being split. So where's the, the new value 43 in Okay, so the f new value 43 will stay here till this gets split. Because now as values get added, they are going to rows, the next will always split. Even if I, uh, I think, let me take you through an example. When you I think, split that first row, do you just open up a new blank row? Yeah. The values in the first row don't move to there. No, they do. They because do. now they will have to be reclassified if, with do the distinguish, when you, the third digit, says, third digit is counted in. With the second, they may still be same. But with the third digit, they may not be. Wait, what, I don't get the 43 stays there, stays where? 
here in an extra overflow. Uh, oh, he gets an overflow. Yeah. yeah. I'll how take long does it stay there? till it hits and gets this one gets split. Until that one gets split. Yeah, till the next pointer comes here and uh, split is triggered. Okay. Let's run through an example because it'll just make it clearer. Okay. No, the round pointer will increase once we have uh, finished because now the round has to. Yes, whenever you split. Yeah. When you add a new, yeah. Then you double the the reference index. Can you say it again? You could start with your next partner. Oh. In the first time it is initialized to zero. Yeah, but that's an arbitrary selection. No, no, no. It'll because you have to go in this. You always follow this when you define this file. You define the number of buckets in it, right? You define your n value. The next pointer will be pointing to the zero value. It is always initialized there till you start adding data to it. So you have this file, right? It will be initialized. Next will always be initialized to zero once you start working. But once you've started working with this file, it will start traversing. No, no, no yeah, but, but why is that not arbitrary? Why should it be arbitrary? Because well, suppose I start my next pointer with one. Next pointer with one, okay. In the same, in our, yeah, in the same, yeah. Okay. If you're there, well, then, then, then you are, you've already copied one down, so there's a fifth row. No, no, no. He's saying no. His question is, he says, why should you start here? Remember, we start always from zero. Right. I'll tell you why. Because how do you know then that you have split all the rows before it? I don't know. I guess I'll have a, like a marker. Or so you end up introducing more markers, right? You'll have to know where, how many rows have been split before this. Right. Okay. I'll give you. I'll ask you one question. Okay. I see you. Okay. Okay. Fine. Because we need to know. I'll give. I'll ask you. Uh, I'll ask you one thing. Is if if you are here. Okay. And I find I find a number that maps to bucket zero. How do I know whether this bucket is split? Should I look only here, or its corresponding row down here, also? Yeah, no, no, I, I see it's, it, you save some information by stopping there. I agree. Not just information here to realize one more thing is once I hit here, here, I know this row is before the next pointer. Okay? If this row is before the next pointer, then this has been split. So I should actually go down and search for that value in both of these. Hmm. Try to think in the form of searching also. If, yeah, no, if no, we no, started no. here, you understand what I'm saying? I agree. If, if we started here, then we would have no way to actually knowing whether we should go, there is a corresponding row below this or not. Okay? So, so, so I guess actually my next question is actually exactly this thing about searching, like mm -hmm. what's the most efficient way to search then? I guess you were just about to say that? Or? It is, if, if you're doing just searching, hash tables are the best. No, 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 I see that, but but now it's a bit. You have to be a bit more careful at least here because your pockets might be split and stuff. Like you don't have to be careful at all, because you they could not. You would know, because you know if my pointer is at one, 
every row before it is split. This hash function, uh, say pointer is at this value, okay? If this hash function mapped me to a bucket in which the value is less than the pointer, then that row has certainly been split. No, so, so, okay, so my question is then, you can now go in and you, the value you're looking for can be in, in several different rows. How do you know exactly what rows you can Yeah, so you will pull out both of these. You know the corresponding row that is split for this. The zero corresponds to n. So you will pull out these two rows and your number will be either of in these two. No, but suppose now it's not two rows, suppose it's 500 rows. But you are doing, you'll always have only two. Because once you are split, your number of n will increase. That is all it will happen. You never have to look in more than two buckets. Exactly. Well, except that row can split. I mean, if no, this, going. no, you won't go in here because now your n will increase. Once you have split here. What's n? n is the number of rows you start with. But so now that is when you're, you'll go into level two. That's right. once we hit here, we go into level two, and then the number of rows is eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now if this thing splits, yeah, then we have the corresponding one, number nine here. Doesn't that give you three, three rows then? That, that I no. These. Why are you saying it'll give you three rows? Because these two now are being distinguishable on the basis of the third. Oh, the third. So it, now it, the fourth it, it, digit it, it, is going to come in. Up. Exactly. Okay. We are just going back up. So you'll always end up looking. You won't look at 500 rows that become child, 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 because once you split once more, they become distinguishable. Okay. So suppose now I have a number. I want to find out where it is. Do I search from the right or the left? I'm just trying to. In what sense? Yeah, suppose if you are keeping no, these no, no, sorted. No, oh. no, 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 forget about those. I mean, like, if I have to find now a number using my hash function. Yeah. Do we start with the hash function number two or hash function number zero? I'm just trying to. You know what uh, the round is. You look at the round pointer, right? Uh, and that will tell you what which hash function. How, how does that tell me? Isn't it? Because the, the, the round pointer will say whether we're still in a four row index or eight row or 16. So you took the first round. Okay, first round, your number of rows is four. And second round, your number of rows is going to be eight. All right, so, okay, so, so, so you, your hash point is kind of replacing one another. Exactly, because your your number of rows is increasing, right? And your number of digits that you are mapping is also increasing. H1 is just mod 8, and H2 is mod, mod 16. Yep. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Try to look at that example once more. Do you, do you want me to do it again? Or if it is clear, then I don't know. Just the, the buckets are increasing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you keep track of how many. The reason why you want to keep track of next is you want to know whether your mapping is in a row before it. So you know you have to look for the corresponding one here. Rusty, you are doing the recitation today? Mike. Mike? Okay, I'll just ask him to do this example once more in the recitation. Just go through this example once more in the book. That is about all about the hash functions and indexing. Just look at these examples. These are very well explained in the text and uh, it will become very clear.